Thank you. And we turn to our next item of business, which is topical questions. And we start with question number one from Claire Baker. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking in response to the terrorist incident at Parsons Green in London. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Presiding officer, firstly, my thoughts are with those who were caught up in Friday's cowardly terrorist attack in London, particularly those who were injured. In response to the raised threat level, as a precautionary response, Police Scotland increased operations to protect the people of Scotland, uh, businesses and public places. This included increasing the number of armed officers on patrol across the country. These armed officers were deployed as part of the measures it taken to allow the public to go about their daily lives as normal. Police Scotland reviewed all significant events over the past few days and have reviewed the security footprint as appropriate. Throughout this process, Police Scotland reinforced the key message to our communities that they, along with their partners, have well-rehearsed plans to respond to any major incidents which may have an impact on Scotland. Police Scotland are gradually scaling back the policing response in keeping with the threat level. The First Minister, the Deputy First Minister and myself were briefed by officials and Police Scotland throughout to gain assurance that what was being proposed was appropriate and proportionate to the threat we face. We must not allow terrorism to triumph. People should not be afraid to go about their daily business as usual. But I would urge the public to remain alert and report any suspicious activity. As a government, we are absolutely committed to ensuring Scotland's law enforcement and other bodies have all the tools they need to tackle terrorism, building on the robust measures that are already in place. Indeed, they are well prepared for this, and the focus has been on ensuring that the required operational measures are in place to ensure the continued safety and security of the public and that they are appropriate and proportionate. Claire Baker. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his response and associate my parties um, with his remarks. It is right that we praise the reaction of the emergency services who once again responded quickly and without fear. It is also right that we thank and appreciate the reaction of the staff at the London Underground, who in many instances were the very first responders for Friday's attack. While I appreciate a serious investigation is ongoing, these attacks do raise concerns over the risks to community cohesion. What steps can the Cabinet Secretary take to ensure that the authorities are working with our communities to ensure their safety and that we are all working together to tackle extremism in all its forms? Cabinet Secretary. I welcome the comments by the uh, member in particular in relation to praising our emergency services and the way in which they respond to these types of incidents and when there's an increase in the threat level. Uh, the member has made a, an important point because although there's an operational response to these matters, uh, what is actually more important is to make sure that we are supporting uh, cohesive and resilient communities uh, to ensure that there is no space for those who would wish to peddle the message of extremism or hatred. And a range of work is taken forward by a number of agencies from Police Scotland through to uh, support we provide to community-based organisations to ensure uh, that that community resilience and cohesion is maintained and supported. But particularly during periods of uh, increased uh, threat level and where there may be increasing levels of concern, there are particular proactive measures which are taken forward by Police Scotland uh, with organisations at a community level to ensure any concerns or issues which have been highlighted in these communities are being addressed as quickly and effectively as possible. And that's a piece of ongoing work that is taken forward by the police and other agencies on an ongoing basis. My colleague Angela Constance and her colleagues take forward a range of work in working in support of organisations to tackle issues around extremism uh, and other, uh, uh, other ways in which it may, the message of hatred can often be peddled. But key to achieving that is making sure that we don't give that message any space in our communities in Scotland and that's why the work we do around creating cohesive and resilient communities is key to tackling this type of extremist behaviour. And Claire Baker. Uh, thank you to the Cabinet Secretary. He will also be aware of the comments made this week by the Secretary of State for exiting the European Union that Britain could continue to remain, could continue to pay in order to remain a part of Europol as part of the new security treaty with the European Union. 
Europol has a vital part to play in our ability to combat terrorism in Scotland and beyond. Can I therefore ask the Cabinet Secretary what discussions he and the Scottish Government have had with the UK Government regarding our continued membership of Europol and ensuring that there is continued international cooperation on security matters in the future? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President officer, the member uh, makes reference to the paper which was published by the UK Government in relation to security, uh, criminal and other aspects of uh, law. I'm disappointed to tell uh, the Chamber, President Officer, that prior to publication of that particular report, despite the fact that it refers to a whole range of devolved responsibilities, there was no consultation with the Scottish Government on this matter, uh, which I believe is simply unacceptable. And I believe it also demonstrates a serious disregard to the responsibilities of this Parliament in these particularly key areas. I've raised previously in this chamber the importance and the value which we get from being a member of Europol in the sharing of information uh, with other European countries, which we benefit from here in Scotland and which other countries across Europe benefit from in the information we submit to Europol. There is no doubt that in Scotland we disproportionately benefit from the measures that Europol provides, largely because we make greater use of the Europol uh, network. Uh, I can assure the member that as a government we are absolutely determined to do everything we can to continue to have access to these important security measures in supporting our law enforcement agencies here in Scotland. And I do wish that the UK Government would actually show more respect for the responsibilities of this Parliament and prior to publishing any paper of this nature which has got clear areas of devolved responsibility, there should be a full engagement and consultation process with the Scottish Government to allow that paper to be informed by the views of the Scottish, public, the Scottish Government. Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the police and emergency services put their own safety and lives on the line daily to keep the people of Scotland safe. In the light of the terrible events and in general, uh, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what specific steps is the Scottish Government taking to ensure that officers and staff have maximum protection themselves whilst they protect us? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the member may be aware that I made a statement to Parliament last year setting out the decision to increase the firearms capability which we have within uh, Police Scotland. That was a key part of the, increase, the action which was taken to increase the protective security measures available to Police Scotland in response to, in response to any particular uh, uh, increase in threat level here in Scotland. Uh, that work has uh, almost been completed. Uh, the level of firearms capability which we now have in Scotland uh, has almost reached the point that Police Scotland had, had set themselves um, this time last year. And what we will do is we will continue to work with Police Scotland to ensure that they have the necessary preparations in place to deal with any incident should that ever occur in Scotland or where they can assist and support other law enforcement agencies across the rest of uh, the UK. Uh, that, I believe, President Officer, is a clear, clear demonstration of this government's commitment to ensure that Police Scotland have the necessary protective measures in place going forward. Thank you. Question number two, Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to concerns raised by Age Scotland that the country faces a crisis in the care sector with some service users being left without food, water and essential medicines. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Oh, we welcome Age Scotland's contribution as a strong advocate for older people and their services and we recognise that Age Scotland and other organisations have highlighted the need to focus on dealing with the recruitment and retention issues in some areas. Uh, of course we have integrated health and social care services, the most radical reform of the NHS in Scotland since 1948 and integration brings together NHS and social care services so that people can get the right care and support at any point in their care journey. Integration is also about ensuring staff across health and social care are equipped to work together to make full use of their shared skills and resources. And of course, this year, an extra £107 million will transfer from the NHS to health and social care partnerships to ensure more people are cared for safely in their own homes and to avoid preventable admissions to hospital and, of course, to deliver the real living wage to all adult uh, care workers. Uh, parts two and three of our health and social care workforce plans to be published later this year will examine how to improve the integrated workforce planning in social care and primary care settings. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer? Will the Cabinet Secretary accept, though, that the additional funding she referred to 
is actually ring fence for specific purposes. That the £107 million, pound, for example, is for additional burdens faced by partnership in relation to the living wage, support for carers and adjustments to care charges. It is not there for growing demand. Will the Cabinet Secretary also acknowledge that the £1.5 billion pounds worth of cuts since 2011 to local government, one of the two sources of funding for partnerships, has forced many councils to cut their contributions to those partnerships, cuts that were sanctioned this year by the Cabinet Secretary for Finance when he wrote to councils on the 15th of December stating they could cut their allocations by £80 million? Pounds. Will the Cabinet Secretary tell us how many more older people are going to have to go without food, water and essential medicines before the government accepts that the current level of social care funding is just not adequate? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, first of all, can I say to uh, the member that uh, in terms of the £107 million, pounds, um, that was funding that uh, did uh, require partnerships to deliver uh, a number of things. Hopefully he will agree that one of those important things that the £107 million pounds was there to deliver was the uh, real living wage, because we know that uh, part of the recruitment retention challenge of the social care workforce is around paying conditions. So I hope he would accept that that's an important contribution uh, towards helping to tackle uh, recruitment and retention challenges in the social care sector. But of course, it does follow on from the £250 million uh, that was uh, put into social care um, as part of the investment in health and social care services, an important uh, resource which has helped to address some of the capacity issues that, that he has cited. In terms of the wider position on local government finances, uh, council services, uh, in terms of the, the increase in spending power to support council services now amounts uh, to over £400 million, pounds or 3.9%. Uh, uh, and of course, um, the uh, other uh, important uh, issue uh, relating to the, the social care services is that recent statistics have shown that um, overall expenditure on adult social care services per head of population has indeed increased by 13% in real terms after taking account of inflation. So although there are challenges, and I would be the first to admit that, I think we all have to also accept that uh, it is not just about resources. Resources are important and more resources are going in to support social care, but it's also about reform. It's about doing things differently. It's about uh, making sure that services are integrated across health and social care. Uh, and it is about making sure that people are supported in their own homes by new services and new service developments, which of course the partnerships are delivering. Colin Smith. President Officer, I know the, the Cabinet Secretary didn't deny that the, the £107 million pounds was ring fenced for very specific purposes, but as well as a funding gap, health and social care partnerships are facing a recruitment and retention crisis. In the survey in the recent report, Bringing Home Care, Scottish Care revealed that over 90% of survey participant organisations had staff vacancies. Well, measures such as the living wage, something I've campaigned for all my political life, are a start. Will the Cabinet Secretary accept there is a need for the government to properly invest in training and other improvements in working conditions to make social care a more positive career choice to tackle the chronic shortages we face? Cabinet Secretary. Well, in answer about the £107 million, um, the, the we, we don't uh, ring fence resources uh, with, with local government. What we do, though, is we expect when resources go in, uh, that there are outcomes for, from that investment. And one of the outcomes that we uh, agreed with a local government was the delivery of the, the real living wage, which is, as I said in my previous answer, is an important aspect of stabilising recruitment and retention in the social care workforce. It's not the only thing, and the member is right to point to other elements like career opportunities, uh, like other terms and conditions. And of course, one of the aspects of the, the new world of integration is that career opportunities uh, are, uh, are enhanced and improved. And one of the important things there is to make sure that there are career pathways into, for example, the regulated professions in the NHS, so that I would like to see a position where someone coming in 
to the social care workforce has the opportunity, if they so wish, uh, to train, uh, to, to go into one of the regulated professions, if they so wish, and that there's a clear pathway for them uh, to do so. Uh, as I said previously, overall expenditure in adult social care services has increased by 13% in real terms. Uh, so resor more resources are going in, but we have to ensure that we make uh, social care an attractive a career opportunity for not just young people but people across the, the workforce and that is uh, partly about pay but it is about those other things as well. Miles Briggs. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Is the Cabinet Secretary aware that Edinburgh's Health and Social Care Partnership is struggling with capacity in the care sector here in the capital and that the Chief Officer has stated bluntly that the health and social care system is underfunded for the level of need currently being expressed? Does she agree with that assessment and if so, what action will she be taking to support the care sector here in Lothian, where we have more patients waiting to be discharged from hospital than in any other part of Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, what I would say to Miles Briggs is that the issues relating to uh, Edinburgh are quite long-standing, as I'm sure he is aware. Now, there are a number of factors uh, to do with that. One is the local market conditions that he will be well aware of, that even with a bit much enhanced rate above the living wage, the real living wage, that uh, home care and care home providers still find it difficult to recruit because there are other opportunities for people that are um, paying, uh, if not the same, potentially more. Uh, so that, that is a challenge. So one of the um, areas we've been exploring with Edinburgh is what other things can they do to uh, enhance the, the opportunities for recruitment to, in the social care workforce. And that might be looking at things like accommodation and other uh, supports beyond uh, just pay. That's something, of course, that Aberdeen have also been looking at where they face not dissimilar local market conditions. So uh, there is no easy answer to this, but it is fair to say that, it, um, that between uh, now, in terms of the delayed discharge challenge, between Edinburgh, the Ayrshire's and Lanarkshire, they account for 40% of all delays. So it is really important that we support those local partnerships to address their particular challenges. And I can assure Miles Briggs, my officials spend a lot of time with the Edinburgh Partnership. Part, they, they need to get new leadership team in. Uh, that is important and we can't have a vacuum. Uh, and they need to get on with doing some of the things that we, we believe will work. Uh, so they need a plan and they need the leadership to deliver that plan and we will support them as much as we can to get on with the job. Thank you and that concludes topical questions. Apologies to members who couldn't get in. I just remind all members and ministers, keep the questions and answers as short as possible, please.